In the next few minutes, you will be learning more than six C++ principles by solving just one question. This question is by far the most beautiful question I have seen. And it's very short. Given a class A, we want to know at any time how many objects of A live in the heap section of the memory. And the concepts that it will teach us is static data members in classes, how to define them, what are constructors and destructors, what is dynamic memory and what is the difference between memory allocation in stack versus heap, what are the differences between new delete and malloc free operators, then I don't want to highlight the seventh point over here because I will be diving into the code after this and I want to explain each and everything in one line and I also don't want you to get lost or start thinking out the solution and then at the end I will if you stay for a while I will giving uh, I will be giving a bonus question which I will be covering in my next video before I start I just want to give a brief introduction about myself I am Rachid Jain a software engineer at Microsoft and I am constantly uploading videos on coding interview questions and lectures and coding interview tips for helping beginners uh, learn quickly and get an exposure to what exactly happens in a coding interview and how to approach those problems. If you want to uh, learn specific topics I have a playlist for that as well like dynamic programming from zero to hero and if you want to learn specifically about trees and graphs I have um, dynamic programming on trees multiple lectures for that and questions based on graphs as well. I'll be uploading all the playlist but it will take me a bit time and I want you to uh, stay structured and use these playlists to um, to achieve as much as you can from these videos. So starting out uh, with the present problem so this is the class A and in the public section I have created a static variable and in the constructor I am incrementing that. Now since static uh, x is a static variable, static data member of this class A, for as many objects that we create, the copy of x will be only one and it will be shared among those. And since we are incrementing that again and again for in the constructor, so how, for how many objects we create of A, the constructor will give us how many instances of this class A we have in memory. But this will give us the number of objects in all uh, in both memory in stack as well as heap but the question is talking only about heap so let's solve an easier version first and then we can make things complex so i have created two objects in first line and three in here so this should print five but as you can see this is throwing an error about undefined reference to x and this can be solved by declaring x or defining x over here. Now C++ knows that x is a static variable in A and it's defined now here with the value 0. So we can now use this code to print 5. Alright, awesome. Now let's see if this code also, uh, so these are local variables, right? Local variables and they are stored in the stack section of the memory. But let's create a dynamic object now, which is created at runtime. So we need a pointer to hold that. And we call the malloc function. Malloc accepts the size of A as input. And then we cast that pointer to A star and we have a dynamic object. So now we have six objects in memory for A. Let's see what does the code print. Oh, so we can see that the code prints five but we created six objects so it means it's not counting the dynamic object till now but why is that this is because of this line over here malloc just allocates memory but it never calls the create uh, constructor it doesn't call constructor to solve that issue let's try allocating the memory using the new operator which is present in c++ so this is the way uh, you uh, this is the C style way of allocating memory but in C++ to handle this issue we can do something like this allocates memory and calls the constructor as well now if you run the code we can see that the count is now 6 which is which is good now we are counting all the instances of A 
Now let's now since this is uh, constructed in the runtime or it's a dynamic object, we can also delete it. So let's free this memory by calling the free function. Now we have after this line five instances of a, so the code should print five. Uh oh, again, it's not what we want, and it's six. How? What is the problem here? Again, this is C style way and it only destroys memory or deallocates memory. It does not call the destructor. Doesn't call the destructor. Okay. Fine. We can solve this by using the C++ style way of deleting things, which is delete pointer. And we can comment this out and run our code again. Oops, we are again getting six. But this is not because the destructor is not getting called. It's because we are not decrementing the code, uh, the counter uh, value over here. So when the object gets destructed, we decrement the value of x. And now if we run the code, we are getting 5. Things look good now. And in fact, just to make sure that free was not working, I will comment out delete and run this code now. And this is still 6. So as I told, this C style way of malloc and free, they do not call constructors and destructors. And I highly recommend you to use new and delete. All right. So this is fine now. We are doing great. We are counting all variable, all instances, whether they are in stack or they are in heap. And I didn't mention it here. So dynamic variables are created in heap. And the question now focuses to count only those which are in heap. How do we do that now? Um, so basically we have to, so from the total count, we have to decrement the number of variables which are in stack or that's one approach or the other approach is we just need to increment counters when we are creating on heap. How do we do that? Because the constructor has no way of knowing whether uh, it's getting called from new or it's a local variable getting created. To solve that issue, the next answer is operator overloading. What we are going to do is very easy. We are just simply going to um, overload the new operator. And what it, how new operator works is, it returns a pointer. To do the operator overloading, we write the syntax. So operator followed by the keyword that we, uh, operator that we want to override, in this case new. And new accepts parameters like size underscore t, let's say size. Okay. So now whenever you call a new on an object of class A or whenever you call new on A to create an object, this function will get called. And what we can do is we can increment x only over here. So now we have overloaded and now we know, basically now we can remove these that we have here. And now the encounter will get increment only when a variable is getting created in heap. So let's call, let's try running this once. I'll not delete it over here. So I've created only one object till now in the heap. So the answer should be one because all the five variables up above are created in stack and the answer is one, that's good. Let's try it out for one more pointer. Let's say pointer two and run the code again and it's working well. Now we just have to make sure that if we delete something, it should get one. Um, so we have to do the overloading for delete as well and I will leave that as an exercise for you. I hope you are clear with uh, how these things are functioning and the only thing you have to do is override delete and then decrement the counter over there instead of incrementing and decrementing in the constructors because the constructors have no way of dealing whether this object is in the stack or heap. So that's why it's better to use operator overloading. I hope you like this video and you learned a lot. If you want more such videos, shoot out in the comments about what problem you want me to make a video next and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more such videos and get notifications for them. I'll see you in the next time but as I mentioned there will be some bonus question 
and I will also talk about that and I will be covering the solution for that in the next video. So let's say the question now changes and now we have a class A and for some reason we do not want any object of that class to be created into heap. How are you going to solve that problem? So basically if someone do, does something like this it should fail. The program should fail. It should throw a warning or something like that and it should stop the user from doing that. How can we use the concept that we just learned to do this? Let me know in the comment section if you were able to solve this problem and as well as override the delete function and, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.